Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. Today we're going to be talking about nets and what they are, so stick around. Hey everybody, this is Curtis. My call sign is Kilo5 Charlie Lima Mike. Welcome back to Everything Ham Radio. Today we're going to be talking about nets and what exactly that they are. But before we get into that, please make sure you click on that subscribe button down on the bottom right hand corner as well as the bell icon so you don't miss anything. Alright, so what are nets? Well, nets are defined as a uh, group of people coming together to meet a common goal. Now that could be for a business, it could be for personal use, whatever, network or net, net or networking it's simply, you know, coming together and doing things the same way. Well, a net on amateur radio is basically the same thing. Over, the only difference is that it is over the air instead of in person. Now, as a net, uh, there are several different types of nets as well, or several different formats, let's put it that way. First off, there's a formal net and there's an informal net. Now, a formal net is one that is run typically during a natural event or a group function, something that needs to be a little bit more organized. Um, typically, this is run like during a Skywarn net or during a bike race or a walkathon or something along those lines is typically when a uh, formal net is. And when you're doing a formal net, you have a net control station and that person is in ultimate control over the frequency. Um, whenever you are a field operator on a formal net, you have to ask permission in order to uh, talk on the net. And basically you just simply say your call sign and wait for the net control station to recognize you and then you can pass your traffic. Now sometimes um, if you have direct traffic to somebody else, you can ask permission, you know, can I talk to such and such? And the net control station will say yes or no. And in that case, if they say yes, you can talk directly to them. But it's still in an organized fashion. And the net control station is there to uh, make sure that nothing else happens during that or during the net. Uh, you know, logging what needs to be logged, making sure there's no emergency traffic, and so on and so forth. Now, during an informal net, you still typically have a net control. They're there on standby in case something happens and it needs to go to a formal style net. Um, but it's typically not really controlled. You can still talk to individual stations without them asking permission. Um, you can say stuff um, that doesn't necessarily pertain to the net. Um, and it's a little bit more informal and typically the way we use it around here is let's say there's a storm coming through and it's still a good couple counties away. Now with Skywarn it has to be activated either by one the emergency management coordinator of your county or your city and two um, by the National Weather Service. Now if neither one of those things have happened your Skywarn team can activate and run an informal net get in place, get ready for when the storm comes through, and be ready for it. And then when the National Weather Service calls or your emergency management coordinator says to, you can go formal and actually have a Skywarn net. So basically this is a like a precursor, so to speak, to a formal net. Um, we've also used it um, in events that we have. Like we have uh, my club does traffic control and security for uh, one of the local city parades and a lot during the actual parade itself and leading up to it we'll have a formal net uh, so we can know where the beginning of the parade is where the ending of the parade is uh, and so on like that at the end of it once the parade is done and we're letting people go sometimes we'll switch to an informal net that way traffic can still be passed, people still knows wh what's going on, but it's a little bit more lenient on getting information out there. 
Now, granted, we still have a net control, so they still will log the traffic that goes through, but it's not so formal as in a person has to say their call sign, the net control has to recognize them, and then they pass the traffic. They just go directly, you know, this is what's happening, and this is where I'm at. So there are pros and cons to both a formal and an informal net. So whichever one you choose for your event or your function is up to you. Okay, so let's talk about some of the different types of nets. Uh, first off, the most common type of net that you'll have in amateur radio is a training net. Now, as a training net, uh, basically this is uh, a time that is set, uh, both the day and the actual time itself, and it's typically the same every week or every other week or something like that. So basically what this is is a time where your group of amateur radio operators in your local area can get together and train on how to do a formal net um, and pass traffic, do announcements, you know, when's your next club meeting, when is your next function, when is whatever. Um, and and that way the, that new operators especially can understand what happens during a net and not really have to worry about, um, you know, when the Skywarn uh, net comes up and there's a whole bunch going on and they're trying to learn how to operate during a net. So you have those training nets to get them trained on how to do it. Now, another type of net is a just a rag chew net. This is typically a non formal net or a kind of a hybrid between the two. Um, this happens a lot on like HF um, and some locally on VHF, UHF uh, frequencies. Um, you will still have a net control and they will still take check-ins, but it's not so formal. Um, you can pass traffic uh, to other people. You can do different things like a swap, uh, swap net uh, type thing. Um, you can you know, just say what's on your mind or how your week was or what kind of problems you're having, stuff like that. Basically, this type of net is used to get people on the radio and talking. You know, one of the things that is, for whatever reason, the hardest for people is actually keying up that mic and making contacts on the radio. And why that is, you know, whether they're just shy, whether they're just uncomfortable, whatever it is, this type of net and the training nets as well gets them over that hump of not wanting to get on the radio and press down that PTT button. So you have your training nets, you have your um, just rag chew nets, you have swap nets uh, for selling uh, used equipment. Now you can't. Uh, actually negotiate during a net because that's against FCC rules but you can do like um, you know I have a Kenwood 733 that I'm wanting to sell I'm wanting $250 for it you know uh, here's my phone number in case you're interested in it and you can do that and that's perfectly illegal and then take your negotiation off the air and on the phone or in person whatever that case may be so you also have things like Skywarn nets or uh, disaster nets, um, which are typically going to be formal. And like I said, with the Skywarn net, it has to be activated by the National Weather Service or your local emergency management coordinator. And this is typically used for uh, storm spotting um, and tracking um, weather as it comes in. Now, Skywarn and Racy's typically work together when it comes to something like this um, because they kind of go hand in hand because of Racy's and Skywarn are as it's happening. So, with Skywarn Net, um, you will have spotters that have a typically stationary spot, uh, whether that's from home, whether that's from a spot down the road, or what have you. Typically, you're not going to be moving. Um, when this goes on. This is not storm chasing like you see in the movies. It's storm spotting. You're not going to be moving uh, unless you're changing positions to get a better view or something along those lines. Um, a racy's net, um, like I said, kind of goes hand in hand with Skyworm, but it's it's more um, for um, disasters or 
uh, actionable net traffic um, that is going on right then. Race season nets are going to be typically for natural disasters or um, actionable. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Actionable events that are happening right then. Um, and then you can either switch gears. Um, a lot of areas will have both races and an Aries team um, that are, are typically a lot of the same people. So you can just kind of switch gears and go into an Aries net. Um, and you know, close down your Aries net, open up your Aries net, and just continue on. Now, as Aries net is, is a little bit different from Aries because Aries is as it's happening. Aries is the after effect, uh, the aftermath of whatever it is that was going on. Um, let's say it's an earthquake. You're going to have a Aries net during the first six hours of of an earthquake, and after that, it'll switch to a Aries mode where um, you will have uh, people doing search and rescue, you'll have people doing uh, damage assessment, um, you'll have people that are um, you know, looking for people that are injured, so on and so forth. Um, let's see, what other types of nets do we have? Um, you know, nets are not um, explicitly for over the air. Um, it's not always um, over RF. Sometimes you'll have nets like the Yacht Club does, the Youth Amateur Radio, uh, let's see, Youth Amateur Communications Ham Team, I believe is what it is. Um, they have a net that's over Echolink. It, it it does also go out over the air on one of the uh, a couple repeaters, I believe. But a lot of it's done through Echolink. Now Echolink is a ham only uh, program or uh, mode that you can use but it is also done on your phone so you don't have to have a radio that can do that so there are different areas that you can do in that as well but um, so nets are basically just like I said just something that is people coming together to share information share experience and gain knowledge and, ex and experience of how to run a net so anyway y'all I hope this gives a little bit more line on what a net is and how they work um, please check out the blog post as well as uh, on the blog at everythinghamradio.com uh, for maybe a little bit more information than what I have here and some other type of examples um, next we're going to be talking this month we're going to be talking about nets and the different aspects of it so make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out my website as well. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can find links down in the description below to both of those places as well. So until next time, please make sure you check out these videos over here while you're waiting on my next video. Subscribe to the channel, like, share, all that good stuff, and thank you for watching. So until next time, y'all, I'll see you later. 73.